I've sent. I've been to see everybody, a therapist, a psychiatrist, a masseuse, even Dr. Ruth, and you're my last hope. How long has it been since your last confession? It's been a while. Well, how long? You know, about how long, about? Oh, quite a while. Since before the Jefferson was canceled? Yeah, way before that. Before that? Mm-hmm. Before Thick Over the Night was canceled? Yeah, it was closer to Green Acres, back when they got canceled. Green Acres? Yeah, I used to love Arnold the Pig. I like Arnold too, but you know, uh, Green Acres was canceled like 1968. You've been to confession since 1968? Well, I've been meaning to. Well, this is going to take a while, I think. You know, I'm, I'm starving to death. I'm going to just run around the corner and get a Mac or something. Could you... I'll be back in like 15 minutes. You could go over your sins. You know what I mean? I'm just going to get a sandwich. I'll be back. You know, you could contemplate them in that, okay? Father, please, I need you. My life is falling apart. You're thinking about eating. Well, I could. I guess I could order something in. You could deliver. Remember, order pizza or something. Would you please? All right. If I ordered a medium, could you eat a slice, maybe? Yeah, I can have you a slice. Want to chip in? Yeah. Or get anchovies? Anchovies, all right? Yeah. The best. Yeah. All right. Jalapeno peppers, too. Help. Remember, I gave like half and so half jalapeno pepper. So, you know, if one of us doesn't like the jalapenos, we could just eat the other half. Yes. All right. Make sure it's thick crust, please. Right. And this truck, too. Anyways, Father. Got yeah. a light? Do any change? Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt, too. Thanks a lot. Anyways, Father, yesterday I was walking down the street thinking that it's been a, a terrible year for Hispanics. Does God have anything against us? I mean, first it was that bad cheese. Remember that? We, we terrible had, cheese. It was a terrible cheese. We it was the, a poison, people. Yeah, we were on the toilet for months. Right. And then then it was that Richard Ramirez, you know him? Right, Richard, he was uh, the fellow, uh, the night the stalker? Yeah, the Mexican night, fellow? Yeah, yeah, he was Mexican. He was a Mexican. Yes, right. okay. Well, the night stalker was Mexican. Okay, yes, he was. Right. Anyways, and then the earthquake, remember the earthquake with like... The in Mexico? Of, yeah, in Mexico. Right. So I was saying, well, what is... And then, then I was saying, well, maybe God has something against us. Uh, but are you going to confession for the whole uh, South American continent or what? You know what I mean? I can't absolve a country, you know what I mean? You're confessing for the country of Mexico? No, no. You should, this is too much for you. You should just, you know, uh, think about your own trip, you know what I mean, instead of everybody else. Well, no. You know, give me some specifics, you know, like, uh, you know, you and your girlfriend, and maybe I don't know what, you know, well, you stole well, the candy, but I don't know, but, you know. Well, okay, Father. Don't you know, tell me about earthquakes. I'm not a geologist. I could not change the crust of the earth, you know what I mean? Give me okay. a break. Well, see, because uh, yesterday, right, I was at the offices of HBO. I was, right. I just want a special. I was in there, okay? And, uh, I mean, everybody was getting a special. We had one guy who was just screaming something about, uh, his old lady divorced him. He got a special? Yeah, he got a special. And then it was one guy with like a, a rubber glove over his head, blowing it through his nose. He got his own special. He got his own too? His, that guy? Yes, his own special. I can't it. I think they signed him up for three more too. What? Yeah. So I was hoping, you know, that I maybe I could get a special. These other people are getting special, so I I could, I could. I could get you on Showtime. No problem. I'll give you a special. Give me five minutes. Well, Showtime's nice, but I wanted HBO, you know, because uh, I really like... Playboy, I could get you series. I could get you, like, 56 shows. Yeah, but I've seen every, you know, it's no big deal to be on Playboy. I've seen, I've seen Kip Adada and Chuck McCann. I got him on, I got him on. I got him on. I got both of them on. You there. did? Right. I just want to be on HBO because I, like, I've always watched Fraggle Rock and I really like right. it, you know? Right. And I was, I was hoping that maybe you can... You know, you can talk to someone up there and pull see. some strings in that, huh? Yeah, you know, maybe you can pull some strings and talk right. to God and see if He can give me the special. All right, I make a call. I'll make a call. Okay. All right. Father, you got to do your own talk. I just put in a word, then you're on your own. Father, is, is that a parrot? Right, it's a parrot. It's for confessions for little kids, not for you. Don't worry about it. It's just for little kids. They don't know. You know, they go to confession. They're afraid. You know. I don't have to sit in here, Daniel, because three or five, three or five, you know what I mean? Gives me, you know, I could take a break, you know what I mean? Don't worry about it. You know, it just makes me feel like I'm at Bush Gardens. What's the matter with Bush Gardens? No, nothing. All right. It's ringing. This is, hello, this is the Sarducci call, headquarters. Let me, 
Okay, put them on if you would, please. Hello, I hate to bother you. You know, we're having some... You won't believe it. HBO wanted to give Paul Rodriguez on special. They gave it to a guy that puts a glove on his head, and we won't believe it, other people. Can you do something about this and put his show on, give me some new idea, tell him, you know, pull some strings, you know what I mean? Do the cloud a bit. That would be great. All right. All right. Okay, appreciate it. How about my man senior ship, too? Oh, no. Anyway, I think something's going to happen now. No problem. Okay, thank you. It's the phone. Hello? Paul Rodriguez? Wait a minute, I'll see if he's here. It's HBO calling, believe it. For me? Hmm? This is Paul Rodriguez. Paul, I've been looking all over for you. You've got a major deal here at HBO. We're ready to start production on your special. Okay, I'm doing it. Listen. We need you right now, and I mean right now. Now? Thank you. Thank you. All right. No problem. Thank you, Father. Good luck. Break some bones. Good luck to you. you about God. The tough thing about God is that everybody claims to talk to him and we're not sure. Right? There's no way you can verify that. You've seen all these preachers on TV. I was talking to the Lord the other day. Said I needed to give me a Ferrari from you people. I need it. I always want to talk to these people. Gee, you know, I just talked to him a few minutes ago. He changed his mind. He said, instead of you, it should be mine now. What is this TV show? The 700 Club or something like that, right? This TV show with this lady with like a, a massive three-story hairdo. She's got mascara from hell. You know what I'm talking about? She doesn't even care about it. She just goes around the head with lines. And you know, I was talking to the Lord the other day. I'm saying to myself, hey, God's got better taste, lady. <laughs> I believe in God. Okay, I'm not the most religious person, but, but I think everybody does at one point or another. Whenever you're in danger and in need, you believe in God. I've been on up in airplanes, okay? I get real close to Jesus when we hit turbulence. <laughs> and Caucasians, you're so cool about this. You can handle it. I've been, I've been in thunderstorms and stuff where there's an Anglo guy just reading Newsweek about a plane crash, you know? <laughs> reading about some disaster, right? With pictures and everything. Oh, God, look, look at the fuselage. <laughs> God, we're sitting in the same section. Look, hey. <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, sir. Um, ain't you afraid of... Uh... Oh, hell no. Oh, hey, listen, your number's up. Your number's up. Go, so, hey, how about if your number ain't up, but some asshole on third row is? <laughs> I'm afraid to fly, man. I don't even use the bathroom in airplanes. I got this fear that I'll be sitting there and I'll be sucked right through the toilet. <laughs> I'll be 30,000 feet up in the air. My balls are dragging Arizona. Ah! Ah! Cactus! Ah! Oh, Suharo! Hey! And what the hell's a seatbelt for? I'll tell you what it's for. It'll be easier for them to identify the torso. <laughs> uh, 6B, that was Rodriguez. Yes, that's Rodriguez. I don't think that's his head, though, but uh, okay. <laughs> they give you stupid instructions, too, on an airplane. Have you heard this? Ladies and gentlemen, in case of an emergency, please place your head between your legs. <laughs> Who are they bullshitting? If I could put my head between my legs, I'd never leave the house. I'd be one of the happiest Hispanics you ever met. What's the fight about, fellas? Look what I can do. 
The plane crashes, what are they gonna find? Find your head with your penis in your mouth. Is that the picture you want on the front page of every newspaper in the country? Damn! Where was he going? I don't know, San Francisco, I don't know. You know, when it comes to gay rights, everybody should be liberal about that. I, I have no joke to tell about that because, hey, look, you know, if you're gay, hey, it doesn't bother me. Fine, I can live with it. You want to play Russian roulette with your butt? Go! Go for it! It's America. Bend over. Go. I don't care. Do it. What baffles me, ladies and gentlemen, how does one man look at another man's furry butt and go, oh, jeez. Oh, Ralph, how does that happen? Where, what metabolism, what happens? What's the mystery there that it, you know, I see a man bend over, I go the other way, I go, geez. Hey, you wanna point that thing somewhere else? I'm glad to be out of Hollywood. Let me tell you, boy, there are so many diseases there. I don't even touch myself anymore. I wear gloves, sterilize them. By that time, the itch is gone most of the time. Because there's nothing funny about AIDS. There isn't. I make no jokes about AIDS. The only good thing about AIDS is that, hey, it made us forget about herpes real fast, didn't it? <laughs> Nowadays, you go to a doctor, he says, it's herpes. You go, all right! <laughs> yeah, honey, it's only a couple of blisters once a month or so. That's all. Yeah, let's party. <laughs> It's a sad disease, and I'm not even making the joke here. It's, I read in the paper, it said that this disease developed when, when a human had contact with a monkey. Right. I'm saying not only was this guy desperate, he was fast, too. <laughs> you know how fast you gotta be to chase a monkey with a heart on? Come here! Come! Stop! I got a banana! <laughs> It's hard enough to take their picture in a zoo in a cage. Much less out in the tundra. Stop, goddammit, Cheeto! Come here! I'm so afraid of AIDS, I got a smoke alarm in my pants. Wait, I even get close to another man, it goes out, beep, beep, beep. The peanuts ahead, peanuts, beep, beep, beep. I was watching, I, it was on the cover of Time magazine. The big question was AIDS, where did it come from? Look, I didn't go to no university. Let me take a wild guess. Someone's ass? Am I warm? Am I hot? But basically, folks, what I'm trying to tell you here is that my ass, my ass is an exit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. My ass is just an off-ramp on the highway to life. It's a one-way street. Hey, I got underwear that says, do not back up, severe tire damage. I don't know. Well, see, the whole sexuality thing, it's, it's funny because the only time relationships are happy is when it's new. You know that. You know, girls. When you first meet that guy, when he first meets you, you haven't been with him or anything, aren't they nice? <laughs> Guys are so nice. Too nice. They treat you so nice. They walk you this way, honey. <laughs> right? They open doors for you. Oh, get in, sweetheart. I'll wait. It's raining. Here, use my umbrella. I'm already a wet back here. <laughs> you marry this guy a year later. Shut up. Get in the car. <laughs> Shut up. Restaurant? I doubt it. <laughs> We're talking McDonald's. You may not get fries. <laughs> you know romance is gone when he has the courage to fart in bed. <laughs> it's over. You know, it's over. You know, he farts in bed, hey. It's really over when he puts the covers over your head and goes, oh, me. get some of this. <laughs> Guys, we have no standards. Let's face it, it gets 2 o'clock in the morning at a nightclub. <laughs> your only requirement is if she's got a pulse. 
got a little mirror, you put it up there. No, she fogs this mirror up. You're fucking. <laughs> when you go to a nightclub, the thing about it is that women, women never go to nightclubs by themselves. Women, you hang around in like little clumps of women. Women are like grapes. They do everything together, right? One gets up to go to the bathroom, they all do. This way, come on, let's go. Come on, honey. Stick with me. Guys are the primitive hunters, right? The hunter-gatherer. See guys at nightclubs out there with a beer trying to be cool. They're going, hey, not bad over there. But I'm going to need a lot of Budweiser for her friends. By the time you get enough courage, you walk up to a girl, you ask her to dance. Would you like to dance, please? They go, no. You feel like everybody heard it. Like they actually turned down the disco music just to hear her response go, no. Not in this lifetime. That makes you feel ugly for about a week, doesn't it? Your legs stiffen up. Your legs won't carry you back to where your friends are laughing their ass off. All the way back there, you're, you're going sour apples, right? You're going, oh, God. She said no. <laughs> she was ugly, too. <laughs> I'm not kidding, man. Her face could stop lava. Because <laughs> women hang around in little clumps, I think, to warn each other. You do, girls. You sit in a little corner, and you have that female radar, right? You can spot an ugly guy approaching you from across the room. And you warn each other, Martha, ugly human being at 12 o'clock. <laughs> Heading in your direction. Vector seven, girls. Vector seven, this way. <laughs> and being ugly is nothing. You can't help it, right? It's genetic. What are you going to do? Go home and slap your parents? <laughs> it's your fault. You should have known better than to mate. Oh, what's wrong with you? My father, my father, here he goes again, but it's the truth. We had, we had people, door-to-door -door salesmen in our house. Don't you just hate that? We had door-to-door -door salesmen, not your ordinary door-to-door -door salesmen. We had like Amway Jehovah Witnesses. People had two reasons to fuck with you, right? Knock, knock, knock. What do you want, vitamins or God? Quick. They'd knock on my door. My father would answer the door, always battling with something in his underwear or something. He goes, yeah, can I help you? Got any calamine lotion or anything like that? No, no, for, you know, my family itches a lot. If you knock on my door at 6 o'clock on Sunday morning knowing that I've been partying on Saturday, don't knock on my door and tell me about Jesus. You better be Jesus. I want to be able to open that door and go, Jesus. Oh. Yeah, come in. You can use the phone. Come in. I didn't know you were coming. I'd have cleaned up. How do you like that velvet painting we have of you? Huh? Yeah. See, in my neighborhood, the Jehovah Witnesses are bilingual, right? They knock on your door. They go, Jesus loves you. And I go, what Jesus? The guy down the street, the dude upstairs, what? Jesus loves me. You better not be spreading no rumors around here. We only did it one time. My girlfriend's right out of town. Who else knows? God, I've been up here too long. I should get home. I left my dog alone. I got some Vietnamese neighbors. Hey, don't awe me like I started this tradition. Like I met them at the harbor and said, hey, welcome to America. Have some dog. Take my word for it. You leave the house. Take Fluffy with you. You'll come home. Your dog will be missing a leg going, where were you? Ah, ah. Shit, this is my fourth dog this month. I have to tell the Ling Chow family now, God damn it, I ain't running no buffet here, okay?
These are beds. And I asked him to, I said, Mr. Chow, <laughs> what's his name? How appropriate. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Chow, uh, have you seen my dog Pepe running around here anywhere? The dude is picking his teeth going, no, Mr. La Ligas, we don't see your dog. What's your dog look like? Like your wife's purse. Now cut the shit. <laughs> and by the way, Mr. La Liga, next time you get bigger dog, <laughs> you get your same but not. I got cousins coming over. <laughs> they did teach me an important lesson, though. They did. <laughs> They taught me, I never really understood how rude it is to talk another language in front of someone who doesn't understand, right? Yeah, me and my Chicano friends, we'd be there talking, hola, Manuel, ¿qué estás haciendo? Pues nada, aquí nomás, estás aquí pasando el tiempo. ¿Y tú, mano, qué? Pues nada, nada. And if you're ever in a confined area like an elevator, there's an Anglo person there, you get self-conscious, you go, damn it, there they go again. <laughs> you start thinking to yourself, there they go, they're talking about me. And we are. <laughs> we're, we're, we're saying, hey, Manuel, can you believe it? Look at that checkerboard pants. <laughs> hey, I didn't know Purina made clothes. <laughs> it's bound to make you self-conscious. I understand you now because I feel just like you when I hear the Vietnamese talk. Maybe I think, it's like cats mating. It's like wherever they run out of breath, that's what they were trying to say. They were there arguing the other day. I went over there and I said, hey, hey, hey. I don't know where you people came from. I don't know how you got into this country. Maybe you were blown off course. If you're here for that Reagan cheese giveaway, it's over, man. No more. But I'll tell you where you're at. You guys are in America now. Speak Spanish. Thank you very much. You're a wonderful crowd. Thank you.
Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs>